Uh, can we play a way out again instead, maybe? Or maybe no, fighters. Maybe maybe, 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 uh, maybe I'll play Dragon Ball Fighters instead. How no? about, How about Sonic Ball Mania? Mania? <laughs> What's GTA. Sonic? You know what? Oh. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. You know what? Save us, Comp Hour. Even Dark Rose Valkyrie, from what I've seen played and kind of gotten a sneak peek of, is a much better experience than what we're in for because, folks. It's not. It's, the, it's, it's la- it, well, 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 there's a faint joke of. Uh, the tr- uh, the tr- as uh, Tails also experienced with Miyajima, like uh, Miyajima is actually a competent rider, unlike David Cage. So basically, folks, for the fourth, or technically the fifth, if you count our revisit fourth. Beyond Two Souls time. Well, oh, you mean as in our playthroughs? Okay, yeah, fifth then. Yeah. Yes, for the fifth. Welcome, time, everybody, to Detroit Become Human. Tackling David Cage. The, the uh, David Cage Devil Dream can't come true. The very thing that put dwibs to sleep. Here's, the, like fa- here, here's the problem. Yoshida. Here's the problem too. This game misses the the entire point of the tech demo. So, <laughs> in case you have missed it, uh, Shiro I actually gave the honor of co sharing, uh, like ghost uh, co playing uh, with a stream on, of the too. game. Whoa! <laughs> Are you the bad guy? No, actually, Jova, she's our gonna be our guide. She's a, she's our personal she's, Chloe Android that she's gonna be guiding us through the game. If you don't remember, Jova, she was she in the trailer. She stated that her model was the very first created. Now this. All right, one, so this is actually time pretty time. cool. I have to admit, like the way you choose your options and you configure the game, she's literally uh, okay. Before you start, please customize your your Detroit experience. So this is a pretty uh, cool immersive way of uh, customizing the options. I'll yeah, give it that. If first one game, one thing that I will say or immediately positive about the game is the presentation. And the gameplay story integration for once uh, the whole option thing uh, combined with the you know yes uh, it took them four the, tries no, that's fine. with the sci-fi although with the sci-fi elements uh, actually look uh, on part they have a distinct style of presentation uh that, that for the rest of it it's uh i will say when it comes apparent but oh my god thing, all right, well, so for casual difficulty settings that actually make sense, you know, as opposed to asking whether or not I play video games often or whether or not I like video games or not. I agree. Just actual casual or experience. Fine. He can learn, Jova. He can learn. But anyway, oh, he can learn enough to make me actually care from what I'm However, I, I, however, however, I'm going to be playing on experience mode because there are certain depths that are un- that are unattainable. Well, basically, Jova, the, one of the big differences between casual, the big difference between casual and experience mode is that there are certain death mom- possible death moments that are not that are automated for oh, the sake for the sake, of, for the sake of making the game easier. And Meet to the best character, well, one of the best characters. One, in one of the two best Connor. characters in the game, Connor. Yes, Two Face. No, this no, is Connor. Jova, that, uh, an Android, that, please. Believe it or not, to Jova, that that coin is a red herring, a big one at that. Not just that, he but even uh, has a special face on it, just like. Uh, uh, all right, everybody. So, Hold on. Is it a good or a bad thing that the best character of the game is um, uh, Android? Well, to be fair, there's most of the characters in this are Android. So why are we here? Okay, ev- okay, Parker. everybody. Um. This is Connor, and he's uh, an investigative detective android, and he's here to investigate a murder. So yeah, we're going to race attorney this shit. Um, oh, I'm... so this is a tech demo. Well, technically, oh. I, well, actually, no. Well, th- well, yeah, the demo of the game this that you can get on. Yeah, the PlayStation exactly. Store's demo yeah. is literally this, just this initial chapter. But anyway, not only that, I'm pretty sure that wasn't this the demo from like every so, time, or is this a different murder? Get this: How David Cage test your decision with the with the choices with a fish. Save the fish or not save the fish. Anyway, well, it's, I, well, Joe, to, to be fair, it's mostly for the sake of think of teaching the controls or something like that. Exactly. But anyway, no, that's going to be an interesting way of tutorial. Oh, and by, and by the way, by the way, oh, Joe, I need to mention this. Did you notice how when I say the fish, it said their software instability up? I'll bring I'll bring it up after this scene. Oh. <laughs> Fuck you, oh, Julie. Goody. Oh, oh goody. Is this going right. to turn into AI where people are racist against the android? Yes, Jova. Yes. Hey, oh, Jova, your best guideline for the type of story of this game is Neil Blomkamp. The, the be- this is literally going to be a story about every single AI story cliche you can ever think of, Jova. But anyway, the general thing is that the software instability thing. It kind of works like in, the, in Fahrenheit slash Indigo Prophecy, where every time we did something, the, our character's emotional status changed. Here's the thing. Just like in Indigo Prophecy, it never it means Jack Squad. It means Jack Squad. It never comes into play in any way, shape, or form in the game. 
Which is weird, because from what I've heard, a lot of the other changes actually affect stuff in the plot, so why not actually have the emotional values affect something? I can tell you at the very least this, Jova, combined with the fact that this is the first ever David Cage game where the story actually is significantly changed by our choices, and the fact that at least one of its plots is uh, legitimately enjoyable, this is by far his best game yet. I know it's, I know it's not saying much, but it's something at least. It's a game I'm actually tempted at getting because there's so many different options. But then I Just remember that YouTube sale, exists. My problem, Jova, uh, is yeah. that uh, the same argument that I've... Oh, oh, hold on. oh and there we go. <laughs> and there you go, Jova. That was the problem right there. Achoo! Achoo! I'm so allergic to cliches. Sorry. And, that was, and there you go, Jova. You just saw the problem. See, this has always been the argument that I have whenever I talk to Terra about this, this, the choices in these games. It doesn't... It does it, To me, it doesn't really mean that much to, to, to have legitimately great choice decision-making if the writing is shit in all of them, because the writing is oh, still garbage. You know, that's sad. I mean, even with Fairy Friends Route, there was at least one route that I felt it was okay, better before. Let me, let me, let, okay, 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 Joe, let me put it like this. Imagine if you put... Uh, let me think. Imagine if you put uh, Skip Woods instead. Instead of instead of writing one movie, you, you write. You put him writing five movies at the same time. No, and, no, and no, the, no, 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 no. Look, I have a better it, idea. he's a shit writer. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter oh, how many God. stories he writes. They're all crap. Okay. About this, uh, if you played Batman Arkham Origins or Batman Arkham Knight, you know exactly how this goes. Uh, you basically the Android uh, replays a uh, holographic reconstruction of how the scene may have happened, and you need to find. Uh, the some something or someone that matches I'm showing it off. It, yeah, in that uh, that may fit in what you're looking for. Here's the it's problem. Kind of Unlike the only... here's the oh, problem. Sorry. Unlike the in the Batman games, it's incredibly scripted and simplified. Yeah, that's the problem. It's like, well, it looks cool and it looks scientific, and I guess it can make someone feel smart until you realize, oh, all you're doing is just sliding left to right, and then you press and hold a button, and bam, you immediately get the solution. Like, uh, Shira, Sh 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 you actually played this game for us, so uh, do you have any? Uh... Can you confirm what Joe was saying? <laughs> Go ahead. I mean, sure. <laughs> I tell you, uh, it sounds like you had a bad experience with this game, Shiroi. Well, wh wh why who didn't? Who didn't? It's oh, okay. well, 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 never mind. Well, okay, that, that's mean. Uh, no, to be fair, there are people who generally enjoy yeah, this yeah, game. That, and to be fair, there are some, some good there are some good aspects to this game, I will um, grant that. Um, oh, so wait, hold on. I have to say this. How do you know the child didn't hear gunshots? Sure, she has a pair of headphones, but that doesn't mean she was wearing uh, the headphones. It's, be it's because she was hearing loud music, Jova. Because uh, he listened to the, to the headphones and they were playing loud music. But so far, you know, she might have been just listening. Okay, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. There are plenty of people who blast their headphones just so that they're able to hear them without putting them on, because that's just the way they prefer listening to them. Well, okay, well, David Cage doesn't know how reality works. Uh, in, in, in our nose, water, water is wet. Anyway, let me explain how this works. Yeah, for the context of a situation, not only has been a murder, but there's now currently an hostage situation, and every second counts, so Connor has to speed up with his investigation in order to maximize his chances to save the hostage. Let me explain that. Uh, oh, go ahead, Shiri. No, it's okay. You, you need to explain something. So, like, go, uh, okay. Okay. So examine, 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 yeah. press the yeah. triangle <laughs> button to examine no, here. No, go, go you move over like Ace Attorney, essentially. You examine other bits in there to collect data. And the Brad Bird? That'll help you later. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like Brad Bird a bit. <laughs> anyway. You kill. You kill. Damn, I, I, I know Incredibles 2 disappointed some people, but still, he wasn't that <laughs> Anyway... Just waiting Go for ahead, over Pedro. 10 years really drove people over the edge. Well, uh, I'm not going to get into that. The point is, okay, here's what's going on. There's a, a, The android that was wor serving this family uh, went sentient, and he killed the father, and he's holding the little girl hostage over the peak of the building, threatening to kill himself and her if he, his demands are not made. So Connor was brought in here so he can investigate the crime scene, so he can try to find out a way to maybe persuade the android to let the girl go, or maybe, if, as a last resort, um, take out the android. So basically, here's the basic case of it. What we're doing right now is we're investigating everything we can know about what happened. We're investigating how the murder went. We already know various things. We know that, uh, like like the game established, the girl didn't hear the bullets. And we also established that the deviant's name, aka the android's name, is Daniel. So that could help. We also investigated that what, what happened in the murder. And we... Sorry, notice how there's a percentage going on. Hold on. This is important. Whoop. 
Mm. Oh, the the, 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 the there you go. The, oh, the, 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 wait, he's going to be replaced. The, he was going to be replaced. That's why he revolted. Uh, okay, so basically, uh, notice how my percentage has gone up. Every time you discover something that's beneficial and will help you in the in the uh, anything that you that you discover, any new information that you discover that will help you uh, give you more information so you can negotiate with Daniel will increase your per your success percentage. The more you have it, the 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 easier it will be to negotiate. The way to ne to properly negotiate and to let the girl go is by reaching a hundred percent. So, if you want the best ending in this chapter, uh, make sure you, you investigate thoroughly. But you you're know, up against uh, the clock. Yeah, you're against, yeah. You're, against, you're against the clock, this, but don't worry, the game gives you enough time to do everything. Oh yeah, Charles, as, 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 long, as, long, as long as you don't dilly-dally, you should be fine. Yeah, I was about to say, actually, it's funny how you're just walking around smoothly while all of a sudden these guys are having a firefight here. It's like, oh my god, everything's going on, and he's that's, just walking that's around. The game, that's the game way of telling you how the time is progressing, because the timer is re is invisible. You have to use visuals in order to, you know... Well, to be fair... Well, to be fair, Jova, there's a, there's, well, there's an Android... Button, button would help. Well... Technically, Joe, to be fair, there's an android uh, threatening to kill a little girl. We can't exactly stay here twiddling our thumbs. I no, mean... no, Pedro, 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 Pedro. My point is like, oh, it's awkward how I get it, Com is a robot, but he doesn't even react as he's quietly walking along. Maybe it would be nice to ask what the game gave you a run button since you're in a hurry, but from what I've heard, this no. continues the ever so wonderful trend that Heavy Rain no, established by not no, ever having a run no, button. No, um, Omicron and Fahrenheit are the only David Cage games with a run button. After that, he dropped it for reasons that I have yet to understand. So, yeah, speedruns of this must feel painful. Hmm, These games are not really made for that purpose, Joe. My point being is, like, when you're Mind on the clock, Andy. though, it can be a bit stressful. And I get it, you know, you could argue it's supposed to be immersive here and there. Oh, Come another on. thing that I really love, well, not, not love, but I really enjoy, is actually the soundtrack. It's uh, extremely techno, and it escalates depending on the situation. I honestly think it really reflects what is going on. Yeah, uh, I, I, on I, enjoy, I, on. I enjoy the soundtrack fine, but I still prefer Beyond soundtrack. Uh, who was the composer, Dweebs? Three of them. There were actually three composers, Joe, to, 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 to let me, let me see. There was a composer for e each of the three. Each of the three storylines there has its own composer. A composer for Connor, a composer for Marcus, and a composer for Kara. Makes I sense. suppose I will give this one credit in that the soundtrack so far is intriguing me more than Beyonce Souls was. Um, then again, that's family was about to have dinner. The composers are Philip Shepard, Nima Fakara, and John Paisano. Oh, 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 this is a truly important establishment. Blue Blood. Basically, the androids are Yummy. powered by a liquid that's uh, that has a specific sci uh, scientific name, but uh, common people usually call it Blue Blood, and it, it allows them to, to identify the name of the model, PL-600. Hmm. And Connor is equipped with basically uh, taste receptors well, makes, to identify stuff like that. Well, it makes sense for the sake of yeah. being able to do investigative. Uh, unlike normal cops, he can actually touch the uh, uh, you know dangerous liquids without being hurt. So he's. In case you're so yeah, you since we're in Detroit, uh, the obvious joke out of the way. This is the closest you'll get to a Robocop game where you're more investigative. All right, I've managed to hit 83 percent chance of success, so I'm good. Well, all right. Well, that was a bit not very polite. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Mm. It, all right. It's time for me to use my negotiation skills uh, to full effect. Name. I'm not playing this game then. Well, if you were if you were playing this game, you would just be a dick to him. Yeah, Daniel, let the girl go, or I swear I'll. Oh, I swear I'll shoot you at the actually, fucking uh, uh, Actually, Libs, you can choose to go that route in this in this particular you scene. You can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, of course, I may risk in you hitting the girl, too. Not, not just that, Jove. It will make him uh, nervous and, of course, will probably make him want to fall in with the girl. Like, he'll fall with her, basically. Although, to go back to what Pedro was saying about the uh, difficulty thing, when I played the demo, because I did actually do that a couple of times, I did put it on the casual mode because I never played a David Cage game, and there's something. Oh, else. God! Let me and tell you. Don't, don't worry, Jova. So, don't worry, Jova. The black cop will not die today. I will not let it. Wait, he's not dead. No, 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 no. Well, no, he's been wounded, but he has not dead yet. 
And if we save him in this chapter, Joba, later on we'll even get him, uh, he'll thank us for it. So. Nice. He has a good point. You can't kill him. He's not alive. He's an android. Oh, there you go. See, every uh, time we do uh, this, we say something to him, the stability of the Deviant, uh, a.k.a. our chance of success, oh, I, that's the public opinion thing. That's going to come out later. I'll explain that later when it becomes relevant. I guess uh, thanks to Sony's budget and the direction and everything, but, uh, well, Beyond was also a good indication for this, but uh, the mock-up and the voice acting has finally improved uh, honestly to at least of a minimal decent level and i really enjoy uh connor's actor and yeah he also brian deckard role. yeah brian deckard is genuinely a really good in this role i think this game he's suffers rather, he's also really active on the social media especially about this role yeah i'll say more later but i'll just say apparently this had a lot of made him a lot of fans in korea of all places yeah this game was actually very successful in asia so the city, the city, the city environments itself and how futuristic it looks kind of remind me a lot of, of um, what's, the, what's the capital city of South Korea mm -hmm. again? Uh, oh. Seoul. 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 Seoul, yeah, Seoul. <laughs> There's David Cage writing. <laughs> okay. How is that actually raising his stability? If anything, wouldn't that make him go more well, cuckoo? Well, well, because I'm being nice to him and trying to... Uh, I just said, he's not. it's not your fault. Uh, you ju you're just uh, distraught. Like, uh, true, 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 true. But then you're then equivalizing him to more machine, which hasn't established he kind of hates. Well, he knows he's a machine, Jove. He just doesn't uh, want... It's, it's not, no, he, no, 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 no. In the sense that, oh, you're malfunctioning. That means you're not supposed to feel. No, no, it's not that, Jova. He just wanted to be loved by the humans. He doesn't care about the whole am I alive thing. Uh, yeah, that's my point. It's like, well, the way Connor said it, though, kind of came off as a bit dickish. But then again, I'm not the majestic All writer. All right, we're 99%, actually. No worry. Oh, oh, I will say this. I will say this. The way the actor's giving it does feel legit. Mm. Compromise. Yeah. Okay, the lip syncing's a bit off in this game. Yeah. Never get why David Cage always seems to have a huge problem. Oh, one hundred percent. I am a good investigator and negotiator. Well, okay, you know, silly stuff aside, that does feel legit for a David Cage game. Here's the problem, Jova. I'm sorry, Jova. Man. <sighs> man, man is evil. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, that is stupid. Like... Jova, what have we become? It's like the game was waiting for you to compliment it to throw that bomb shot on you. <laughs> You know, the sad thing is that I'm not even surprised. I am not <laughs> even surprised that it happened. You lied to me. You betrayed me. <laughs> you lied to me. He shot at me. Yeah, you, know, it, it, you know what's the interesting thing, Jova? This is not even my favorite outcome of this chapter. My favorite outcome of this chapter is if you lie to him about having the gun so you can keep the gun, and then when he's about to threaten to kill her, you bust out the gun and shoot him. You know, Cold and, 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 then, and then you leave, and while you're leaving, you hand out the gun to the to the to the cops and leave like a badass. <laughs> so, oh, snap. But I have to all right, this is the scene's flow chart, me. ladies and gentlemen. What you're about to see is the flow chart. This is one of the best features of the game. Every time you finish a chapter, you, they show you the flow chart. What is the flow chart? It shows you every possible outcome and every possible decision you can make alternatively. So every time you, you want have to go to the wiki. Yeah, basically, whenever you want to try to replay a chapter so you can uh, turn out, uh, try out alternate paths, there it goes. There was a total of five different ways this chapter can end. And yes, six I'm, actually. I'm, Never I'm, mind, at, six. At six least actually. personally, I'm pleased to say that uh, for once, David Cage finally managed to do his fucking own work uh, and make <sighs> choices that actually do matter in the end. I just wish he did his research for Detroit in general. Oh wait, that's right. This is a futuristic Detroit, which has little to no black people. But I'll get more to that when it's more relevant. But I, I will say this though: some of those choices were more. Clear. Well, there there are plenty of uh, black characters in this game. I mean, no, no, Pedro, Pedro, Pedro. It's the thing that he made it that they're not the majority. Like, if there's one thing people will tell. 
tell you about Detroit is that that's one of the few places that has mostly African Americans there. Yeah, maybe it's a bit of a nitpick, but it kind of just goes to show how terrible he is at doing his research at places. All right. Well, we're but I digress. He doesn't actually leave his house. All right. Now, but... Okay. Um, I will say this no, though. The dream is his house. <laughs> okay. Um. Yes, Jova. I think part of the issue with this game, this game suffers from X-Men movie syndrome. And I'm talking mainly about the older ones. You know how back in the day people praised those movies for just being good, okay? And I'm talking about early 2000s X-Men because, well, the superhero movie genre back then was uh, a train wreck. In the, well, well, in its F&C, basically. Yeah. Well, basically, that... Basically that well, that's the problem, Dweebs. Who knew who Blade was, sadly? The thing is, like, well, like with X-Men 2000, and don't get me wrong, that movie's not bad, it's just, it hasn't aged the best. It clearly shows that, you know, it needed to be more realistic and down to that level be before people would start allowing more sillier comic stuff. There are uh, there are better X-Men movies, I thought. They came after that one. Here's another interesting yeah. thing, Jova. Uh, you also get rewarded for trying out the different outcomes, because every time you accomplish anything in the flowchart... <laughs> You gain points that you can use to unlock extras, like uh, extra, extra av different avatars, uh, special features videos, the soundtrack. Um, different costumes? No. Sadly, oh, no. come on. Those are always some of the most fun things to do. I don't, I'm not sure how they can work for a game like this. All right, time for a survey. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Why? <laughs> uh... What? Hmm... Pedro, sure. Take this survey I mean, uh, maybe, maybe even people? for me, I'm actually, I was actually really interested. Do you think in that technology story. can become a threat to mankind? Yes. So, what are the what what purpose do these surveys include? Hold on. Book, cell phone, pen and paper, a console, and an instrument. Well, mm. it depends. Would I be able to plug the console into anything? A console. Probably not. No cell phone. You can call for help. The mo mobile phone. Sorry, what am I saying? This is a getting service on it. There's no reception on a desert island. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'll... Pen and paper? Why? So you can stab yourself and end it? I'll go to console, I guess. What do you do with, what do you do with the paper, wow. though? <laughs> you use the paper to, to basically yes. slice your neck. Trust me, paper cuts can be deadly. Yeah, but it would take a while to slice. For the record, the by the way, everybody, this is... Well, sorry, it's not like you're going to get... Hold on. Yes, Pedro. By the way, everybody, this is yet another blind playthrough that you're seeing. This was my first time playing the game. Goody. So, sure, right, since we're just doing a survey right now, um, you were talking about your experience with this game? Hold on. Fedora. Hold on, Jovan. Don't you want to comment on the questions? I do. Yeah. I mean, do these... <laughs> Again, I ask, what purpose do these questions serve other than, you know, just your everyday survey? It's it, more of a foreshadowing uh, of the... It's a foreshadowing more, more, of, the, of, the, of the themes of the game. Alright, then. Get to see um, what other people have said, too. Like, yeah, we do. Alright, then, let's yeah. have a look. Um... Sure, yeah. yeah, I mean, machines are efficient. No. Although the one in Catherine raises some interesting questions. <laughs> Do you think one machines could develop it? Well, Shiroi, when you're yes. comparing, well, Shiroi, when you're comparing your own opinions on things to people on the internet, yeah, that's going to happen. Those are the percentages. What percentages? You can see on your the, on answer. The left of the answers. World's answers. Uh, 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 percentages of people who oh, said there. yes, people who said no, and people God, who said no. This them. color scheme is really annoying. Yes, yeah, so let's put Tell light gray me. on a white background. Well, to be fair, the text is black, <laughs> so it's... Feature, it's no, Joe is referring to the percentages. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, true. Yeah, true. I mean, I can see it just fine, but most people... Well, okay. Imagine you're watching this from farther away, or you don't have the best of eyesight. Or you're Shiroi. Oh, okay, I'm going... Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm going to mention... Okay. When you go for an eye test and you're given text, what color is said text? Black. black. Peach black. Thank yeah. you. Seriously, Why like in gray. <laughs> That's almost it's as the close. Future. Sorry, Shiri. The future is not for the blinds. Jesus Christ. No, seriously, this is such a consistent problem. I've lost count of how many times I've. Oh, had apparently to raise no one, point. no one is spending less than an hour with the electronic devices. <laughs> well, at least they're um, honest. Actually, actually, Shiri, that that that, that actually reminds me of a question I've been I've been wanting to ask you. 
Sure. Um, let's um, maybe save if, it for later because what if, kind of. Well, well, you're going for questions at the minute, and you're on the oh, options. We're, we're done. Actually, I'm done. Yeah. All right. So, anyway, sure. Why don't you bring up like your um, experience with the game before the parts? So, over. Uh, Chloe, do you have something on your mind? Uh, oh, we're supposed to care about her. Yeah, yeah. She, 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 she uh, brings about some interesting stuff, actually. Sometimes. Yeah, she, she. Right, uh, every time you come, you turn the game on, the Jova, she always has something new to say, and she always, oh, so she's like... and, and she'll also comment on your decisions. Like for example, if you allow, if, for example, let's say you're playing as Kara and you allow Kara to die, she'll kind of. I can't believe you allowed Kara to die. How could you? Something oh, like so that. she's like a fusion of Kara from Undertale and uh, more. Chara, like, yeah. yeah, and also like Call uh, from. Actually, Jova got it right, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, and also like Call from um, Mighty, Mighty Number Nine, Number Nine. <laughs> where she greets you every now and then and comments on the settings and whatnot. Not just that, the Jova. Chloe will go, is going to have her own personal mini story arc as the game progresses, but uh, in the we'll main see menu, later. yeah, okay, yeah. Th- yes, yeah, it, it is actually worth paying attention to what she has to say. This could either be something anyway. good or something terrible. I'll let, honestly, it's fine. Something a big deal. Like I said, the menu is a good reflection of the themes of the game in all of its aspects: the presentation, Kara's, uh, sorry, yeah, uh, Chloe's dialogue, and um, the survey itself. Why do I get the feeling that the main menu is going to do a better job of representing that than the actual game? I don't know. Well, Jova, I'll, you, you, I'll let you decide that when you when we get again, to the final Again, from thoughts. what I've seen, and again, as I was saying, this game seems to suffer from X-Men Syndrome, where people praise it, but more like people praise it in, you know, well, in the context of David Cage media. Yes, it's quite possibly the best thing David Cage has ever made. Problem is, it's the best thing David Cage has ever made. Compared to a lot of stuff, it's apparently still lacking. Yeah, here it, here. it's it, it's the same kind of argument that I also made back when Uwe Ball made Rampage. Congratulations, dude! You've made something that's not completely embarrassing. Here's the problem. Uwe Ball was the guy Wait, behind Rampage. Rampage turned out to be good. Yeah, or, uh, he made okay. them. He, he made them move back in 2010 to called Rampage, and it was actually oh, not that. Oh, it's not bad. the the more. It's not the recent one. No, no, the, no, no. You're thinking of a different Rampage. Um. Uh, it's the same it's the argument that I always give whenever it comes to those things, Jova. Congratulations, David. You've made something that's not the complete embarrassment. Here's the problem. When compared to other games, especially other PS4 exclusives, it's still not that good. So, yeah. yeah. Comparing it to stuff as simple as they turn investigations, it's, it looks as easy as balls, because... Well, that, honestly... well, but remember, Jova, that's part of for the course, because... David Cage uh, is all about the saying that games should be more about the experience and the emotion rather than the the challenge because he doesn't care for challenging games. That's the thing we already I just know. Just have this. one more question before we end this part. Yes. Are the controls as finicky as they were in Beyond Two Souls? Because I played that game and oh the god. Co- well, slug it, at least to me. Well, that, well, that's the thing. Again, Jova, it's the same thing that I keep saying. If you're unexperienced with playing games like uh, Heavy Rain and Beyond, like for example, Teo had struggled a lot playing Heavy Rain. Um, if you're not, if you're, if you're not, if you're not used to these to the to the typical David Cage controls that they've, he's been having since Heavy Rain, yes, you'll ha- it'll take some time to get used to. I don't think it's that bad. It's uh, not uh, heavy, really heavy Rain really is terrible. Yeah. Heavy Rain is terrible at controls, but the controls in Beyond and Detroit are. Fine, they could be better, but it doesn't take that much to get used to. I would argue. Uh, obviously, it varies well, on the person. Is... It varies uh, on the. Oh, I get that. It varies... mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Let, let me ask that... you this, Jova. Let me ask you this, Jova. How do you think Beyond controls? Well, when I first controlled it, it felt terrible, and now that I do know how to control it, I still think it's terrible. I mean, yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't mess me up like it used to. It's just the controls feel so. So, okay, it feels like a sake of they know the game is practically impossible to lose, so they felt, eh, that excuses the gameplay feeling finicky. Uh, in I that mean, ca- sure, in that I case, get Jova, some of them, sorry. but that doesn't make it good. In that it's case, not like Devil May Cry where I feel like I've accomplished something by learning it. In that case, Jova, you're all set, because this game controls exactly like Beyond, pretty much. Oh, except, I guess, minus the item controls. Not yet, not, well, in terms of yeah, mine is adding controls, but in terms of walking and interacting with things, it's exactly like Beyond, basically, control-wise. It's exactly like Beyond. If you've played Beyond, you already know how this game feels. That's the, the, that's the basic gist of it. Anyway, everybody, uh, in the next part, we finally, 
finally play the rest of Kara's story that we le were left on a cliffhanger in the tech demo. However... Oh yeah, that's right! Kara was in this game! I nearly ha forgot! However, for the sake of uh, a little refresher, since the game actually comes with the tech demo, for the sake of refreshing everyone's mind, we're going to start with the tech demo so we can, you know, remind ourselves of how this is supposed to start, and then we'll start Kara's story. So, tune in for that. I guess that. it makes sense. The GTA yeah. weren't there for the original. See you then. See ya. See ya.